Hello, so today we'll be focusing on cerebellum. We'll talk a little bit about its anatomy and its functionality. Why is cerebellum an important structure? Why do we care to know about it? In a simple movement such as picking up a pen, there's a great deal of coordination. This coordination is between smaller, simpler fragments of motion, which will integrate in the cerebellum to make this simple movement of picking up a pen. Why is the structure amazing? Cerebellum means small brain. As you can see, it is almost one-tenth of the brain, uh, as you can see in the rest structure in the figure. Its location is in the lower posterior region of the brain, and it's literally called the small brain. Cerebellum anatomy is simple, if you can think about it in the rule of three. We have three lobes, three deep nuclei, and three layers. The first lobe is the spinal cerebellar lobe, which is also called anterior lobe, represented by the orange region of this figure. Uh, its major function is regulating muscle tone and muscle execution. The second lobe is the cerebrocerebellar lobe, also called the posterior lobe, uh, the blue region in this figure. Uh, its major function is planning and modulation of movement. The third lobe is the vestibular cerebellar lobe, and also called the follicular nodular lobe in the purple color. Its major function is balance and control eye movement. The nuclei are the dentate nucleus which is the most lateral to our figure, and it projects to the motor and premotor cortex. The second nuclei is the in interposed nucleus, which is project to lateral descending system. The most medial, or almost in the center, below the vermis, which is the, the middle region of the cerebellum, is the vestigial nucleus, and it projects to the medial descending system. The three layers we have is the molecular layer, Purkinje layer, and the granular layer. There is two major fibers in the cerebellum, which are mossy fibers and climbing fibers. Also, it's important to note that we have five major cells in the cerebellum. One is the stellate cell. Stellate means a star, that's why we have it in this shape. We have the basket cell. Purkinje cell, it's my favorite, Golgi cell, and granule cell. It's, it's important to remark that the first four cells are all inhibitory, except for the last one, which is number five, granule cell, is the only excitatory cell in that cerebellum. Now I would like to move to, to, take, to zoom in actually in the cerebellum and look at one of this repetitive unit or circuitry in this structure. Um, as you can see here, we're zooming in in this fold of the cerebellum, and we'll be talking about uh, major inputs that actually projects to this cerebellum. We have two major inputs. First input is from um, the sensory nuclei in the spinal cord. The second input is from the inferior olive of the medulla. I would like to note here some of our structure that we already uh, introduced to you, which are um, Purkinje cell, plays a major role. We have the granule cells that are the member, the, 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 the only excitatory cells. We have mossy fibers and our, our Golgi here, the orange guy with the mustache. We have basket cell and stellate cell. Now, I would like to follow and, and and take you with a tour in how the input actually turns into an output that actually in the end projects to the thalamus and then to the motor cortex. Okay, I'm going to walk you from the first input, which is the sensory nuclei, from the spinal cord and brainstem. Mossy fibers from sensory nuclei synapse on the granule cell at this region. They synapse which is axons actually from parallel fibers that innervate Purkinje cells. So as you can see from granule cell 
go, those fibers actually become horizontal, called parallel fibers, that actually synapse with Purkinje cells. It's, it's synapse with the dendrites of the Purkinje cells in this region, which produce simple spikes at high frequency. The other input is from inferior olive, and that's why you see a little olive climbing, because it's climbing the climbing fibers. It goes from the inferior olive in the medulla, goes up climbing fibers that actually synapse on the dendrites and the soma of the Purkinje cell, making complex and low frequency spikes. Those spikes integrate and the output will be synapsing with the deep cerebellar nuclei and it's always, as we said, inhibitor synapse and then goes, projects to the VLC in the salamus which actually projects in the end to the motor cortex that initiate the movement. There's two major things that I would like to, to mention in this whole circuitry that we have two regions where we have inhibition, two major regions. We have lateral inhibition, which is between stellate cell and basket cell. This inhibition is called lateral inhibition because it sharpens the excitation in certain areas by suppressing it in another. The another 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 region of inhibition is called the rosette. Which, is, which involves Golgi, Valsi fibers, and portion of the granule cell. Those two inhibition regions work into tuning the motion of, um, in the cerebellum. So what's the goal of this circuitry? The goal is to, com to compare the actual feedback with the expected feedback to fine-tune the motion. Again, it's very important to note that cerebellum cortex do not initiate movement, but rather coordinate it. The initiator we will talk about in another movie is the M1, which is the primary motor cortex. I would like to make a little summary about the whole thing we talked about today and about this circuitry specifically and say that cerebellum receives two major inputs. One from the sensory system, from spinal cord, and the other one from the other parts of the brain. It actually integrates the, these sensory inputs and fine-tune our motor activity. That's why when somebody has damage to the cerebellum, he does not have paralysis, but rather ends up in a disorder of the fine movement, such as balance and adjusting the motion.